Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We appreciate uh, you all giving us a listening ear. Uh, today's message, which is October the 16th, uh, today's message is uh, we are coming from St. John, the, the uh, 10th chapter, 11th verse. We're talking about wolf and howling and uh, the good shepherd. Jesus spoke and said, I'm the good shepherd. And uh, and so also we touched bases on the, uh, Exodus, the third chapter, when Moses, God called Moses and he went down into um into Midian after he left Egypt and then he went back into Egypt to deliver God's people. And and basically what we were trying to share in that is that uh, God's plan um, has a period and a time and God's plan always comes together. And it may be 40 years, it may be 20 years, maybe 10 years before God go, you know, have you go to the next step. But while Moses was down there in Midian, God was preparing him to go back to Egypt. And so God was teaching him how to solve his own problem before he went back to, to, to solve other people's problems. So God always had preparation involved. And number two, I think I talked about the jet of the plane that the Lord you know, spoke, spoke to me about years ago. And we may hold a picture of it. So that's what the message is about today. And we want you to give a listen in here to hear what the Lord is saying. Maybe God has spoken to you and shared something with you about doing it. And maybe you laid it down, you let it go, or you listen to other people, you forsook it, or you turned back. But I want to tell you to go back and encourage you to go back and do what God told you to do. Okay? So God always, always give preparation. He always, always, and I said always, uh, prepare you for what he's called you to do and give you strength and fortitude to do it, okay? It will require faith, and that is on your part, okay? And so we want to encourage you there uh, to continue to do what God has called you to do. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you. Well, we appreciate God for everybody that's here today. Uh, it's a wonderful day that the Lord has made. Uh, thank God for family being here, mother, aunt, sister, sister. And uh, thank God for Junior. Good to see Junior again. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bunn. Praise the Lord. All right. Caleb, Caleb, I call her Caleb. <laughs> and then that's Jacob, that's Elisha on the uh, other camera. All right. And, and don't you think just because you're in the body of Christ, or you're out of the body of Christ, but I'm saying especially when you're in the body of Christ, don't start taking stuff for granted. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why I get up and I try to spend quality time before the Lord to hear what he's saying. He's not talking a whole lot of whack like some of us. And can't fulfill and can't come through and can't back up what they say. And so, I don't know, you know, I just spend quite a lot of time. God won't let me know something here, let me know something. Now I'm going to be sensitive to what he's saying. Now, this is what I'm going to say. Went to Walmart the other night and didn't have no inkling, no idea uh, what was going to transpire. Went to Walmart, like you normally go to Walmart, you know, or wherever you go, and you on your way back and so on. And so, it was a line of cars in the far right lane. It's, it's three, two lanes. And you know, I got the middle lane for turning. And it was a line of cars in the right lane. And then then one no cars in this lane right here. So I said, well, it's going to because I already know they're going to ride slow. They, when the light change, they're going to sit there a minute or two because they're on their phone and everything. <laughs> and you just go on by your business. And get them, you know, turn because I'm going to go a block or two farther and then turn. I'm, I'm watching this transpire in my conscious. You cannot react fast enough. And so don't tell me, you know, if something happened, I'm just going to, well, sometimes you can react, but I'm just saying, well, this is what, this was not pre-planned. I didn't practice this enough, rehearse it enough. That's why I say we need to practice living right, practice talking right, practice acting, acting right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, speaking, as I, as I said, and living in, 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 in the context of scripture truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, okay, I'm going to... I, I can frame, I can see it in my conscious my, and, and how it was transpired, but it just didn't register. And I saw these two cars, and one of them turned in front of the other one, and this car hit that car. They were rolling about 40, 50 miles an hour through the intersection. Oh, man. And both of them cars are coming straight toward me in the truck. That's what I'm saying. You cannot react fast enough. One of them was coming backwards toward me, and the other one was pushing it on the side. And both of them coming straight toward me. 
If I tell you when them cars got in front of my truck, they went to the left and hit the car in front, on my left. Uh, oh my lord. Mm. There ain't no flute. Mm -hmm. God does not make mistakes. Mm -hmm. He do not have to back up and recant and ask Vaughn and say, Vaughn, what do you think about this? He ain't got to run by you. What he do is right and what he tell you is right. Mm -hmm. You are not going to get any better. That's why I say I'm leery of folks that wanna, wanna, want, 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 something, want something better than what God says. Mm -hmm. Stay away from folks like that. If Pastor will come, come give you his opinion, his idea over the word of God, Y'all stay away from Passover. He ain't going to do it. He ain't planning on doing it. No, okay, well, I'm not doing it. I am not for sale in that area. And so, um, I, I'm, set, I, I'm sitting there and, and you know, the, the, the first act, you need to back up. But back up didn't happen until about most 30 or 40 seconds later. When those cars, and I just, I just knew that car hit me. I mean, hit the front of my truck and messed it up. Because fast as they were coming. As soon as they got to my truck, they went to the left. Mm. And I, you know, I don't want them to hit the car on oh, nobody. Mm -hmm. But they hit that car on the left and messed it up. <laughs> and the other two cars were, and and they and some boys jumped out the car. And I, that's when I put it. When them boys jumped out of that, that, wreck, that wreck car, there was two of them, actually three of them wrecked. When, when them, them boys jumped out of one car, two or three of them jumped out of the car. I already knew what time it was. You better get out of here. <laughs> so I bagged up and went on my way. I wasn't trying to stay and be no witness mm -hmm. or nothing. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm pretty sure they were some of the, some of the other people got out and was trying to see if the person in the other car was all right. And they probably messed up real bad. Mm -hmm. And I didn't spend no time. I didn't have time, you know, mm -hmm. to get involved. And I'm just thanking God for his protection and just Amen. everything that he does. Because it can happen. Mm -hmm. And I thank God. Like I said, uh, we hope that what we share with you today uh, would be beneficial. Which y'all know what I was saying about the makeup. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, they do it. So the camera, with no glares and no, no nothing. So it'll be powder or whatever they put. Makeup enhances you. Yes, it does. The word enhances, the enhance means to increase in value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. If you got a house, a second house, and you want to sell it, and, and it, it's not in horrible shape, but you enhance it. Mm -hmm. make it look better. So beautify the appearance of it. You can ask a little bit more. Paint it. Put eyeshadow on the shadows. <laughs> shadows. The shadows highlight the house. Yeah, the shadows on the windows. <laughs> on the windows. Yeah. You know, they highlight it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Anyway, so it enhances it. Uh, it increases the value. That's another word. Yeah. It increases in value. Mm -hmm. And it makes you great. Is what it said. That's one of the definitions of enhancement. Mm -hmm. Okay? And increase in value. Okay? Make great. I always tell you all, if you think for one minute a mushroom, you can build a house out of mushroom, you cannot. And I don't believe in just, you know, blowing this time, like I said, we just talk. But these just preliminaries is what I'm doing. It takes a tree to build a house. It, it takes you getting rooted and grounded in the word for the principles of God to work in your life. Like I say, I grew up in the church, been in church all my life, Methodist, Baptist, and Pentecostal, which is Church of God in Christ. And we got happy, we didn't dance all around and run all around the church. And I was following them too. Running around the church, thanking and praising God. And when you got through thanking and praising God, your knees still wasn't met. You still had problems. Pro I guess the, the word that I'm saying, we learn how to solve problems. Okay. You're going to live a life on this earth. And that's far as I go. Kayla, can you, can you hold one thing up? You got the thing? <laughs> now, I want you to, do, I want you oh, to remind me of what I said. You're going to live a life on this earth and you're going to be noted for something. Okay. We're going to go ahead and go into the Word. Uh, hope you have your Bibles. If you have your Bible. And if you have your phone, you know, you turn on silent. If it vibrates, it vibrates. You know, we can't hear the vibrates and rings and so on. Um, but we appreciate God for all you are here today. Uh, Caleb, what did I say? 
You're going to be noted. I already got it, Kayla. I'm going to have it. Okay. You're going you're gonna to be noted in this life. Now, today we are probably, I'm probably going to share, touch bases on several things. One of them, one of them I'm going to lay these introductions out. One of them may be our belief system, you know, what we believe. I personally, I, I came to the point to where, and the other one, uh, and I'm going to come back to this, what I just said. I came to the point, I'm going to come back to that. Um, what it means to believe. Wolf and Hollings. Hollings. St. John, the 10th chapter. I'm just I'm saying what I may touch on. And uh, maybe one of one of one of one or two other things. So another thing I might touch on Exodus the third chapter. It's about Moses. You know. And uh, and that's probably why I kick off and then I come back and backtrack. Because if anybody been on the computer and you leave you you you, you hit the plus sign up there, you finna open up another and then you, you don't see what you want to, you know, you want to keep that for a second too and go back to it and hit the plus sign again and you what? And you open up another tab. Well, Pastor Hope believe in opening up tabs. Yeah, I ain't, no, I ain't heard nobody talk about this. So. Pastor Hope opened up tabs. And he never, sometimes he never come back to those tabs. But what I'm saying in that tab, <laughs> tab area is necessary. Now, if you don't close them out, you go back on there. It's something else, you know, advertising and everything else be on it. But anyway, that's, that's another story. We... We in it. The tab is open for you. You, you know what I'm gonna say The the tab is only for you. You fuss fuss with me if you want to. The tab is not for me. That's that's what I say. You think for one minute God sent Moses way out there when they say you had to you had to inject God in, in this when, when Moses when when they were down in Egypt. Moses was born. He's supposed to have been dead, and his mother feared God more than he feared the command of the king. And they saved Moses because he was a goodly child. And they put him in a basket. And when he got to where he could not be hid, then they, they put him in a basket and 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 then, you know there's a word that, that I that I that I liked trust and and uh, you know you hear people say you know a lot of give you a lot of definitions and so I like to simplify where it ain't complicated. And you complicate a lot of words then people you know you still misunderstanding them. And I just, you know, it's the execution of that truth that you hear preached and teach you that you practice on a daily basis. Now, you know, that's a whole lot. And I just like to simplify. And trust is 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 the is the placing it placing it, whatever it is, your life, your finances. Let me say your finances. Most people don't do it, but your life and anything else that you have. To place it in the hands of God. How do you place it in the hands of God? You give it to him and you see what he say, say about it. You see what he... You get his advice on, on it. See what he think about it. Commune with him and see what he think about your life. Or whatever, you know, situation is that you're dealing with. And it's the placing it in the hands of God properly. For safekeeping. That means you don't deviate. You leave it alone. You give it to God and you leave it alone from there. You just thank and praise God. Don't go messing with it. Like situations in your family. You've got family members that they're riding on the riding dirty is what we call them. On the wrong side of the road. Whatever, you know. And we constantly up all night praying for them. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying we, we want them to straighten up. I, you know, um, what's the drug prevention? You know, you see these, these things they, they have. Children, you know, four or five children, and then the baby boy or the baby girl, uh, then got you know went to college and got involved in drugs, mm -hmm. and their family care so much about them until they just constantly, you know, on them to 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 straighten up, and they cry for them and sob for them and so on. Well, you place that individual in the hands of God properly. That means you pray for them. Like I said, you know, and I give you testimony, my daddy, and and uh, uh, when I gave my life to the Lord in the late seventies, rededicated my life to the Lord in the late seventies. I think I witnessed to him two times, maybe one time, because he could see me coming with a witness, and, and boy, he'd go off, <laughs> he cussed, he, no, he, he cussed me, you know, it's all right. 
No, I'm just saying that's just the life that I live. God heard him. And, 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 and that didn't intimidate me. Oh, See, I'm just saying, if you intimidate by what folks say, okay. I ain't intimidated by what folks say now. You know, I, I told you our story about the, about the preacher stood before, sit before the lawyers, panel of lawyers. He's trying to buy a, a $13 million building, and they, they presented him a contract, and he agreed to it. And, 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 and in that contract, he forfeited. So he, they, they called a meeting. Emergency meeting, so, and the lawyers, that panel of lawyers were telling him, we can do dust and so you, we gonna do this to you, and we gonna do that to you. And he had his lawyers sitting there, and his law lawyers trying to uh, communicate with him, and so he put his hand over there, you know, to his lawyer, and, and he stood up, when he stood up, his lawyer pulled his coat, and he pulled it, I pay you to represent me. That's what he told his lawyer. Mm -hmm. He told that panel of lawyers, you can't do nothing no more than God allow you. Mm -hmm. Now I like this part. You can't do no more than God allow you. And if you do go farther than what I want you to go, in the end I still win. Mm -hmm. And he left. <laughs> so you ain't got to be intimidated with folks. If God allowed them to go farther than what you want to, guess what? You still gonna win. You just don't act out of character. Praise you don't act ugly, mm -hmm. as we call it. Mm -hmm. And, and get in strife with them. Jesus did it. He wasn't intimidated by Pilate or, or Herod. No. I mean, uh, yeah. He wasn't intimidated by them. Caiaphas, Caiaphas, and not. He wasn't intimidated by them. And he said, don't you know I got the power to kill you? And he guess what he told me. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have the power to kill me. And then you know what? That comes from staying, being with God and walk with God. Listening to God. God will never intimidate you. You, you said what? Hezekiah had that problem back in his day. And he, he went to the Lord and, and opened up the letter and the Lord read the letter. The Lord can read whatever it was written in. He read it. He read, let, opened the letter up before the Lord and the Lord read the letter and he told Sennacherib, you are not coming into this city. He told Hezekiah, you, Hezekiah, Sennacherib is not going to come in this city. He didn't already hedged it. You know, he all surrounded the city where nothing can go out and nothing can come in. All this caused a fame. And the Lord, and then they sent a letter to him. And, and in the midst of this, Sennacherib got called somewhere else to Egypt. Something erupted and he had to leave. <laughs> he said, he ain't not going to set foot in this city. And he never set foot in the city. Make a long story short. <clears throat> when he woke up that morning, I think it was 144,000 or something men and men were, were dead. God dispatched one angel and he almost wiped out that whole nation. So don't you don't you discount God that he can't move for you and he can't work for you because he can. Now, he can. <laughs> so don't you think in this other part, Exodus, I don't have time to go to it. Now I, I may go to John. And then I'm going to come back. And like I said, we stumble over words. And I don't like stumbling over words. Um, and and I, I like to read them and look at, it, look at them in their, the state that they're in and give an exclamation as to what it is. You know? And so that's, a, that's what I, I said, you know, what it means to believe. Mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, you know, we hear these words. Trust God, you know. And like I said, it's to place him in the hands of God properly. Whatever it is that you face and dealing with, and there are times you're gonna have the, uh, you're gonna be tempted to worry, cause it's taking so long. <clears throat> well, time is on your side in essence, in, in this, cause God knows. You just make sure you're doing what He calls you to do. Yeah, can can I do this, you all? Uh, I'm probably gonna pull it out more than this. I guess. I moved it, so I can't do it. It may be in the, in the office in there. Okay, here it is, right here. <laughs> Y'all already know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Get a good look. <clears throat> Y'all, y'all see my state now? Mm -hmm. Do it look like I got one of these? Mm -hmm. 
I, you know, I, I don't need, personally, I don't need it now. Mm -hmm. I can't park it in my backyard. That's far as I'm going now. Huh. The distance that I'm going is from home to here. But when, when it comes time for me to go from here to Yamba, this come into force. Mm -hmm. Don't bother me. Because my biological clock is ticking and all the book. God already warned me of that. Because I was telling him that about, don't you know, you know, I'm this, this age and, and, and this was a year ago. I was more than about, I was doing this like on a Monday, sitting on the patio, saying, "Come, come here, Lord, don't you know I'm this age?" Now I can understand if I was that age, a lot younger, and then you told me this what you were gonna do in my life, and then three days later when I'm more in the backyard, he 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 he, he showed up. No, I'm serious, I'm somebody he showed up while I was more than more than y'all, and he like he stood in front of the lungs and pointed his finger in my face and said, "Don't you ever let your age be an issue with me using you." Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. I stopped the limbo. He fell off the limbo and started crying. <laughs> the way he spoke to me abruptly. Well, I was more in the front yard several years before that, and he said, I'm going to do phenomenal things to you, uh -huh. unusual things. Mm -hmm. These kind of things that God talks to you about things that he get ready to do in your life. And it, it looked dumbfounded for me to stand here with this picture of this jet in 2000, I mean, in 1990 from 1998, so it had to be two years before that. In 98, so it had to be 96. Mm -hmm. Working part time at the post office, the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, begin. I walked in one morning, the Lord spoke to me, Son, begin to thank me for your claim. I'm like, What? Who still said that? Mm -hmm. I did like, a, like an audible voice. And so, from that day in 1998 to now, guess what Pat's Hope been doing? And God for his plane, his jet. Okay. I'll show, I'll show you all the principle. <clears throat> if you was going to talk me out of, you've been talking me out this a long time ago. And if you can talk me out of it now, I'm still not ready mm -hmm. for what God want to do. This is God's desire for me, but it's going to take my faith to bring it to pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's constantly walking in the light of the word mm -hmm. on a daily basis, thanking God. <laughs> now, and, and I don't have time to get into it. And I'm, I'm finna turn to St. John, the tip chapter. I'm talking about whoops and howls. Y'all just hold that. And I say, Pastor, you ain't even opened up the Bible yet. Okay, I know I open up my Bible. I'm telling y'all to open up one if you got it on the iPhone or whatever, you know, situation. And so, I guess the point of... Say, say John, say uh, it, it's talking about wolves, wolves and howling. howling. Mm -hmm. what it's talking about. He said, I'm a good shepherd, and all that come before me are thieves, wolves, and howling. Well, you got to know what a howling is. You got you to know what a wolf is. And then you got to know what a good shepherd is. And most people in the church abuse good shepherds. A lot of good shepherds are abused by church folks. And they ain't doing it in the world, they're doing it in the church. And it's bad. And I said bad. You don't care nothing for the for the for the men or women of God who stand before you to labor, who, who who pray for you to have good jobs, get job raises, good good get good vehicles and houses, you know. What what needs do you have a uh, a uh, a uh, Name a cheap, cheap, cheap house. You know? Cheap, cheap. 30000 That's cheap. Okay. Real cheap. Inexpensive house. $10,000. i am going to go to the A $10,000 house. Y'all already know what it's going to look like. How many bedrooms? One, one. one bedroom. And here you driving a Range Rover. No, I'm just saying. You got that. You got you got a Jaguar parked in front of you. You living in, in an apartment and you driving the most expensive car. You, you, you follow what I'm saying? You, you, you got your backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing wrong with it if that's what you can afford and that's what you want to do. But I'm just saying, sometimes we got that backwards. And so, okay? Um, and, and so, 
so most most pastors, most shepherds, just over a flock of, of views to, to whatever degree, whatever. But they, they pray for your well-being, for your safety, mm -hmm. for you to have good jobs, for mm -hmm. you to drive good vehicles and all of the above. We don't want you all to get it mixed up, you know. And put the rhyme to the reason. When I say the rhyme to the reason, it, 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 if you can afford it, fine. If you cannot afford it, don't try to live according to the Joneses, you know, within your own means. And so, so, so anyway, um, uh, a wolf don't care nothing about the flock. I'm, I'm gonna get back to this. I'm coming back to my 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 plan because God told me to have one, and if He told you to have something, you better have it. And you better learn how to have it. You better get with somebody that can teach you how to have it. And that's what I've been doing. I've been feeding on other men and women who have planes. What am I going to talk to you for? You ain't got one. No, I'm just, you, you follow what I'm saying? What am I going to constantly communicate with you for? And you ain't got one. You don't know how to tell me. You believe for a van. I'm not believing for no van. <laughs> Why want to hang around you? <laughs> okay, all right. Y'all leave me alone. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a van. <laughs> if that's what you believe in, for fine, you know I'm, I'm with you on, on that. But you think for one minute, every time I see you, you look at the Lord, you know, the Lord really bless you with a van, you know. And, you know, if you can't go down, I, you know, fine. But that's all right. I'm going to hang around folks that already got them. Mm -hmm. Communicate, that's what I mean. And, and, and so, because they can teach you teach you something in that area, specific area. And, and so, so, uh, <clears throat> And uh, so, all that come before me are wolves and howlings. Howlings. I'm just going to read this part of it, and then we're going to go on. Um, okay. And it says it right here. Uh, Jesus made the statement. Uh, the 11th verse of John 10. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. But he that is in howling, howling is a, is a person that's hired that you pay them to do a job. They don't care nothing about you. All they after is M-O-N-E-Y. That's their main... That's their main, that's all. They don't care nothing about your well-being. They don't care nothing about your salvation and none of the above. All they're after is money. They're hired. And you can see that on your job. You can tell the ones on the job. You go to any job, and I've worked it. It, 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 and if you're supposed to be there at 7 o'clock, they get there at 6, 6.59 and a half. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know they ain't late, but, but they get there just in time. They ain't going, and, and as soon as it's time to go, they get off at 3 o'clock. At 2.45, they shutting down. <laughs> Ready to go. That's why I say, as, as a pastor, sometimes you have to be here for the folks. Sometimes you have to be here after the folks and blah, 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 blah. You have to wear many, many, many robes. Mm -hmm. yeah. As a pastor, and I don't complain. I take my job, and I don't try to get you to do what I do. You know, in the sense, I try to get you to do what what God has called you to do. In in the sense, but as far as taking my place, no. I try to share with you some of the things that I face, but I don't try to put my burdens upon you and my responsibilities on you. God will give you your own responsibilities as to what it is you ought to do, and He'll hold you responsible for that. If it's to be here on time, if it's if it's something that needs to be did around here, I personally I believe God will let you know. Just like I said, if I'm up here coughing, <coughs> and I'm constantly trying to talk and cough, <coughs> and this baby see that I got a problem, and he say, Pastor, I need some water. He go back there and get a cup of water, and as he's coming through the door, he trip and fall. Some of y'all said, what is he doing? How long would he go somewhere and sit down? He'd have made a big mess. He saw the need. Some of y'all didn't see the need. Mm. Okay, let me shut up. Let me leave that alone. <laughs> we, we, we dance, dance everywhere. And, and, and see stuff need to be done. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Mm. Okay. You, you know... Just like the man, he, he he fell out, you know, the preacher prayed for him, he fell out on the power of God. As soon as he fell out on the power of God, his phone rung. 
He say hello. <laughs> now, I'm saying, in essence, I'm saying the same thing. Y'all see stuff that needs to be done. Y'all up here straight praising, thank the Lord, dancing around. I see stuff not, uh, you know, I want to say stop dancing. And, and, yeah. Don't you see this? You know. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, <laughs> let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. Uh, anyway. Uh... Yeah, I know. I know who I am. I'm, oh. All that comes from me, he's a good shepherd. But all that comes from me is the person is hired to do a job. You pay them to do a job. As mm -hmm. soon as they get paid, they go. Like I say, you they're not dependable. You can't depend on them. They ain't coming early and they ain't staying late. They 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 hire to 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 do what they do. And not considering your well being, shepherds does. They care for your well-being. Amen. They'll be here. They're dependable. They're trustworthy. And that's why I say, I, your, you all, you all, you all trust in me is is not for sale to anyone. You know, if I got all y'all's email address and all the above and so on, there are companies that pay you to get that, those addresses so they can send the junk mail to you. And hopefully, mm -hmm. out of a hundred people, they're gonna get fifty to sign up, or twenty mm -hmm. to sign up. Y'all email me not for sale. I don't care how much money they throw at me. Nobody throwing no money. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, big ministries got a lot of members, got a lot of you know partners, and their emails and addresses and so on. And a lot of ministers will not sell that, divulge that information, and that's good. Some of them may have, I don't know. But but one of the gentlemen said no. Y'all email and y'all personal sensitive information is not said. You know how you get spam calls all the time. Ooh, mm -hmm. Jesus. Just just every day, fifty or sixty of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out of the fifty, sixty spam, they going somebody gonna you know listen to them. And so like I, I got one about uh, got one the other day too. Same thing. Uh, eBay now eBay account has been compromised. Mm -hmm. It it happened twice, you know. And uh, one of them, I think, was eight hundred dollars. This one was sixteen hundred dollars. Well, I called that number, and when they, the first thing I do was say, "Red, the same way with Social Security." And and so, but anyway, <clears throat> that's why I said, you know, in, in in this hour, genuineness. What what was I talking about last week about the genuineness, the authentication of a ring? You know, it's, if it's I was talking to you <laughs> about, you know, buying her a ring or whatever, you know. Oh, you held the ring up. And I say the genuine is a real, you know, mm -hmm. it's real, genuine. pure. Mm -hmm. you, you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, it's the genuine is of the word of God. We've got to know truth. Just not be familiar, but know it in the intimate state, intimacy stage of it. And this is what I'm saying, because it's getting so now to where, you know, um, you could be deceived. Yes. Yes. And it's easily to be deceived if you don't know truth. That's true. Okay. A draconian is a draconian in its rightful purpose. Mm -hmm. But when you put it up beside a real diamond, it has to take a what? A back seat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to be authentic in what we do. And that's why God spends special time. Don't you think for one minute, God sent Moses. Uh, Put him, allowed him to be in his grew up in Pharaoh's house, and then all this that came about had to be the handiwork of God. Now, I, I do say this: you cannot make a thing happen if God has something for you. You can't make it happen because right. we see where Moses uh, knew that the call of God was on his life to to get the children of Israel delivered mm -hmm. some kind of way. He knew. It don't say it scripturally, but you see it. You read the context of the scripture, you see it that it was working. Mm -hmm. He knew he was called. He tried to make it happen and, and stood up for the, the Hebrews and killed an Egyptian. That was the wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. And he had to flee for his life because he was being killed. And he went down there to Jethro, out in, in Midian. Mm -hmm. And that's where he spent the 40 years. Mm -hmm. Now, he'd already spent 40 years in Egypt. Mm -hmm. For now, 40 years of his life. And then mm -hmm. the next 40 years he spent them down there with, 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 with his father-in-law, Jephro and Midian, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's the priest of Midian. Mm -hmm. 
Make a long story short, don't have that. Oh, I'm finna say because you know I had mine on. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but anyway, and so, so anyway, <clears throat> while he was down there 40 years, God is preparing him to be authentic, uh -huh. to be pure. That's preparing him for the next stage, stage, and step of his life. 40 years. He could make it happen. It took God to make it happen. That's why I say you, you, God tell you something and then you going to make it happen. No, you constantly believe God every day, every day, day by day. If you can't make steps, you, you take inches. Mm -hmm. You just inch your way forward when it seems difficult and so hard. And you see other preachers and pastors and men of God look like they're in the fast lane and things are working for them. And here you are still right here. Nothing is happening. Nothing taking place as if it's. Always remember God is working on something. You just make sure you're hearing God. Yeah. You keep your heart right. Not hold any, what we call it? Animosity. Animosity, anger, resentment. And that will stop God from working. He or she is on that side of the house. He on the other side of the house. The other side of the house is where the garage is. <laughs> And the storage room. <laughs> no, I mean, cause they 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 got a cold war going on between. He said kids. He said kids can't go to the fair because he don't want them to get into. And she won't take the kids to the fair. And somebody got their lip out now. <laughs> it ain't worth it. Ain't worth it. I'm not saying. I'm, I hope y'all. <laughs> I don't know what you got going on. I'm just saying, you know. You, you follow them? No, no, no. I'm just, you don't mind me using it like that. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. I ain't trying to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm better than that. So I'm more than that. Um, and, and, and so, I'm just saying, you got a cold war going on. Animosity, anger, resentment, and then God can't move. And every, you know, because he didn't bring no balloons home for my birthday and all that, but look, I forgot my birthday one, one year. My, my, my wife said, a week later, said, honey, did you know your birthday was last week? I said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> don't bother me with days and, you know, I don't, you know, Christmas come and come. Yeah, I'm, I don't try to, you know, I, I have to because my wife. Well, lady, if it's before me. I would not think about days and you know birthdays. Say, did you know my birthday was last week? No, I forgot. <laughs> you know, you know, my wife is good on. She remember the days and all that. I don't. You know, there are some days I remember, but some days I don't remember. I mean, where she's up in this area and I'm down in this area inside. You know, she tried to get me to come up where she is, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and so, but anyway, um, as I said, Moses down there, forty years. God is preparing him. For what's next? He knew he's supposed to go in to get the children of Israel to live, but we gotta work with God's plan. Same thing I'm telling you here. I can't make it happen. And then God tell me to leave the job. I could have saved enough money to at least make a down payment on it. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna add it up. In uh, five years, let's say, I'm saving ten thousand dollars a year. You know, I'm just saying, just you know. and and. $10,000 in five years been $50,000 and then I already had some saved up. Uh, I probably would have had close to $100,000 saved up. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, somewhere around there. I would have I would have been real close to $100,000 if I was trying to save up just to get to, because I'm just, I'm finna say, I could have worked all over time I wanted to work and, uh, you know, plan, I'm just saying, you know, to, to save up enough money for a down payment. $100,000 probably wouldn't wouldn't, wouldn't be enough. Yeah. You'd probably get another one similar to, you know, a used, good used one that's been well taken care of, well managed. But it'd have been, it'd have been a good start. You follow what I'm saying? The point I'm making, it, the point I'm making is this. And, um, and so, the Lord told me to leave the job. And you all don't know how much pressure uh, that, that comes, now I ain't going to say comes, but how much pressure there is associated uh, when God had told you this is what you ought to do. You ought to go all over the United States and other parts of the world. And and uh, and hold conferences and, and uh, seminars. And he said, "Well, I said, Lord, I got to be saying something if I'm gonna do that. Well, preparation is necessary. 
I understand it. I'm not taking it for granted. And I tell you all this too. You may not be going all over. You may go in your neighborhood. You may whatever, but prepare yourself. Not just to stand for folks to you know, show them how eloquent you are and intelligent you are. No, but you, you, if God can't trust you, okay. Before God sent Moses back to Egypt, he taught him 40 years how to solve his own problems. See it. The next 40 years. 40 years while he was down there in, in, in no man's land, Amen. God was teaching him how to solve his own problems. Amen. Before God allow you or turn you loose to solve someone else's problem, he's going to teach you how to solve your own problem. Amen. And we get loose and try to solve everybody's problem, and our problem is bigger. Mm -hmm. We ain't learned how to manage it. That's right. Now, like George Mouse said, God does not have time to be correcting you before masses and masses of people. He's going to correct you in the lower stages. And most people don't think that's necessary. It's, you know, it's, it's a, no, it's necessary. He's going to correct you in the lower stage, so he will not have to correct you in the higher stages Amen. of life. And so, um, so he spoke this to me, and so he told me to leave the job. I left the job, and the pressure that's associated with it, you pressure just to go back to work. Lord, let me go back to work. I ain't said that. I, I will not put word to it. No. Take no thought by saying Mm -hmm. And Pastor Ho learned that principle. I have, you know, thought may come, but I ain't saying it. When you say it, you give life to it. Mm -hmm. and it'll fight you to the nail. Mm -hmm. And then I cast the thought down. You come back thoughts with words. You cannot come back thoughts with thoughts. Hmm. You must put words to your thoughts. If your thoughts are, are running rampant, you you hearing all these old cuss words and foul stuff coming. Through your, you know, because stuff we associate with, we, you know, looking at pornography on the, you know, all these yeah, cuss words, and so we've been going to these comedy clubs, and they cussing, and you've been around folks, and you grew up in a house with folks who cussing, and all this stuff, and you don't want to say that, and these thoughts come to you, when somebody crossed you the wrong way, the first thing you do, you know, you, you ain't pull your earring off yet. <laughs> no, you ain't even pull your earring off yet. When you pull your earring off, it's on. You already know. You, you ain't going to take time to run your sleep. <laughs> like, like I was looking at the show. Now you say, my wife was looking at the show, and the lady was talking, and she was doing her head like that, and then a wig fell off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the talk show, I mean, up, you know, she wasn't ready to scrap or nothing. She was just talking to someone, you know. I mean, she got good hair, but I'm just saying she had a, you know. And so, so you ain't you ain't take time to take that off and this off, and you took, you took your earrings out, and so. But, but the point of making it, making it is this, all these foul thoughts come and you want to set, you want to get them a piece of your mind and all the above and just say all oh, because stuff we've associated with. When all these foul thoughts come, start coming, do not come back them with thoughts, other thoughts. You come back them with words, truth, scripture truth, and you can overcome. Just like I say, if your mind is, is doing this and then I tell you to do something else by saying something, by speaking, your mind have to stop and listen. It don't keep going. It have to listen to what you're saying. Okay? Now, and so, the pressure that's associated with it, and uh, I will not give thought, I will not give words to it, you know, go back to work, you know. Lord, let me go back to work. Because the principle that you are setting for, every Friday, every two weeks, you're going to get paid. You're going to see the check coming in. No. If, if I'm working on a job and I get up at 7 o'clock every morning, you know, got to report to work, and I do that consistently. At the end of two weeks, at the end of a week, or whatever, what's going to happen? That principle work. Just get up and go to work. It don't you know, say it takes faith to do it. Yeah, but when you, when God speak to you and tell you to leave the job, and then you ain't got you, you got to believe for increase to come in. Mm -hmm. It's different. It is totally different. Yes, it is. And I'm not saying God called everybody to, but I'm saying it's totally different. And I ain't coming here giving y'all a sad story to feel sorry for me, Caleb May. No. I'm teaching you principles. I mean, I'm, I'm going to teach you principles. I'm going to show you principles. How to get your needs met. Okay. All right. How to believe God for more. And, and here, here, here it is maybe that, that I may be facing it. And so the point, the point I'm making is this. He took me off the job. 
And I don't go around telling everybody he took me off, but this is what he told me to leave the job. I left the job. And, and when I left the job, and since that day, I left the job, I've been pressured to go back to work. And I had job offers to go back to work. Wait on you 30 years or 20 years before he do does and stuff. See, I, I don't understand it. You know, we turn loose and we ready to do stuff and, and haven't been prepared for it. I'm not, not in the sense of being prepared for it. We are prepared for it, but I'm just saying, I, I, I don't understand the method. You know, how God, he... You know, he raised one up and he go do it and then he don't raise one up for a while. So, but anyway, uh, the other thing that I, that I was going to say, I'll say, so, lawn service. And then the other, other one, job offer came to, to, to me to go do, go travel and do the type of work I was in, in the industry I was in. And at the time when I retired, you can, you can do that type of work and every two weeks you make $10,000. Now, I can, I can go sign the books or whatever and you go to union and I can do that, go do that type of work, traveling and do line work and make $12,000 uh, every two weeks. Man, that's, that's a whole lot of... <laughs> but that ain't what God said. You, you follow what I'm saying? It's tempting, but it's not what God said. And if you want God's best, you have to do it the way he said do it. Okay, now, so that brings me to this... Uh, We, we, I'm actually, I'm actually done. I, really, I'm, I'm actually done. Y'all got John 10, 11, 12, and 13. Y'all read that. I, I paraphrased all of it. I didn't just finish read. I didn't just read all of it. But y'all, y'all got the point of what I'm saying. Wolves. A wolf is is a person that well, a thief. The person takes away from you. Mm -hmm. it, it's not theirs. They they do whatever. Uh, the gentleman that uh, live. Uh, over here off of uh, Finley, friend of mine. Uh, Friday morning, I got a call from another friend of mine saying that he got up the, uh, that morning, the one over here off of Finley, got up that morning to go fishing, five, you know, four, four, four or five o'clock. Now, I've been fishing with him. That's the time he normally leave about 5.30. So he got up, he was out in the garage where his boat was getting stuff together. And uh, he said he opened up his garage though and turn around backwards to, to open up the tailgate on his truck because that's where he parked his truck all the time. And he just he opened up the garage door. And he said when he opened up the garage door, he never looked out there. He just reached back to open up the tailgate and the truck went down. He said he did it a couple more times. He went from, and finally turned around and his, his truck gone. Somebody just stole his truck. You know what I'm <laughs> I mean, it's, it's comical the way I heard it, but I'm just saying, somebody stole his truck. So the thief will take from you. A lot of times, they're more advanced than you are. How they do it, I don't know, but they do it. They spend more time trying to disarm you and, and put you in anguish than, and they, they're good at it. Well, I got a phone call at 3, three o'clock, uh, about 3 o'clock, uh, two weeks ago. And my neighbor next door called me and said, my alarm went off on my truck and there was a guy, a guy out there trying to, trying to do something. He could see him, he got cameras. He could see the, the, per, the person that walked up his driveway, went to his wife vehicle and couldn't get in there and then he went to his truck. And soon as soon as he called the police, he called me. And he saw him, he, the, the cameras, the guy next door got cameras in the front of his house too. And they could see whoever was in the vehicle, pulled down there to the dead end, went across the street, and fooled around over there. And then another one walked across the front yard, and went down his drive. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning, everybody's asleep. All the intelligent folks most of the time are asleep. Unless you like Luther. <laughs> Luther is my stepfather. He go to fight. He go to sleep at four four thirty in, in the afternoon. That's what time he go to bed. He come over there one two o'clock, knocking on my door. Tony, are you up? And I'm like, what? you know, that month my stepfather doing that. He knocking on my door, you know, one two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Lord, anyway, so 
He called me at 3 o'clock in the morning. He said, somebody tried to break in his truck. He said, if you open, pull this door handle and the door is locked, and you pull it too many times, you're locked. That's what happened. And, you know, make a long story. Most of the time, the Lord lets me know. And I think two or three weeks, maybe a month before that, it's like I, you know, have a dream, and I could see like somebody was trying to steal something out the yard. Oh, I saw somebody stealing something. And I already put myself in position. I parked the truck close to it and blah, 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 blah. And I prepared myself. And so, so, you know, they, they make it hard for them. And so I, st I made sure everything in the back was locked up. The trucks and, and whatnot, you know. So my truck's the same way he is. If you pull on the door handle too, too long, it's going to go up. And, and so, so uh, a lot of times God warns me. Mm -hmm. And he'll let you know hey, what to do, you know, how to prepare yourself. Now, there are things that happen to be under your control. Like I said, the accident that, that happened, I ain't have no control of. But, but thank God, you know, he's, he spared me and didn't let it take place, you know, to, to, to that degree. And so, like I said, thank God for all of you out here today. It was, it was another direction, really, I wanted to go, you know, in that. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and the other thing is this that I, that I was going to say. Uh, when I was talking about Moses being down there in Egypt, uh, when he went back to Egypt, uh, you see an, an incident on the way to Egypt where apparently Moses did not fully obey the Lord in a certain thing that he was supposed to do. And it may have been because of Moses' wife that he didn't do it. He disobeyed the Lord. And God, and this scripture said that God was going to kill him. And it was about circumcising his sons. Apparently his wife did not agree with him. And so, make sure you, you you carry out and you fulfill every detail. I don't care how simple it is, you make sure you fulfill it and carry it out. It may be simple to you, but it may not be simple to God. Kenneth Pope made that mistake. Something simple, he looked over. And the Lord has spoke to him about that thing. And then months and months and months and months later, his ministry is suffering. He's a million and some dollars behind. In what's it in the red? What is it in the black or red? In the red. Okay. In the red. He's a million some odd dollars in the red. And he's praying and seeking God. Find you know, want to find out what's the problem. And he's going to the right person. And God said nothing. <laughs> you go to the right person and the Lord said nothing. You 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 keep sitting, you stay before him until he says something. And then finally God says something. He said, Kenneth, he said, Money is not your problem. And Kittle Coleman said, you could have fooled me. We <laughs> don't talk to God that way. You know, if I, if you got problem, you know, you come to this church and we got, we, we give away food and you come to the door and, and say, and you say, I'm showing sure home, show is hungry. You know, you say, I show it, I show, I'm sure is hungry. Can I give me a plate? And then I say, food is not your problem. <laughs> <laughs> What are you gonna say to me? You see kids coming out the door with folk coming out the door with plates. You know, to go to places. And I said, food, it's not your problem. <laughs> you gonna look at me and say, huh? You know, I already know. You you gonna correct me. I'm hungry now. You know. But anyway, is that for Kim Coleman, you know? It's the symptoms. See, the symptoms of a thing is really not the thing. And I, I, you remember when I was out at, at U.S. Church and Ed Smith came up for prayer. Mm -hmm. And he said he was having a problem with blood pressure. And I got to pray for him. The Lord said he don't need prayer. Now I'll tell you all the story. But she was there that Sunday. And I got to pray for him. The Lord told me not to pray for him. Huh? You know, he got symptoms of high blood pressure. He told me that. And so I can get ready to pray for his high blood pressure to subside and blah, blah, blah. And I got ready to pray for him. And that's why I say a lot of times when I stand before people, I just don't immediately just lay my hands on my I'll get a sense in our leading as to, and the Lord say you don't need prayer. And I say, huh, he don't need prayer. And then I stood there, and then I could see barbed wire wrap around his head. And like the opposite end was being twisted. Twisted the opposite direction. And the Lord said, there's a foul spirit in the You break the power of that thing, cast him out, and he'll be set free. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And it left. So you can pray for something with a person with, with, with a foul spirit of infirmity, and it, it will subside. Clear up for a second, but it's coming back. If you break the power of it, you completely deliver and heal. You follow mm -hmm. what I'm saying? 
And so it, it, the, the symptoms of that thing, you know, it give off symptoms that it's this and this. And that's what it was, the symptoms of it was like his finances was a problem. But the real problem was, it, when, when the Lord said that, finances is not a problem. You could have fooled me. And then he said, Killer, do you remember when I told you to make this adjustment over here? And he thought back a year or two ago or six months ago. He said, oh, Lord. He just looked over it. And when he made the adjustment, he repented before the Lord and when he made that adjustment. As soon as he made that adjustment, the money showed up. So God knows what he's talking about. Now, I don't know how long I'm going to have to stand and wait and believe, 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 believe before it manifests itself. But however long it takes, I don't care if it takes forever, I'm going to be doing it. Believe in God for this right here. Mm -hmm. Number two, I, I said this. When I stand before people, I want to be able to share with them. And that's why mm -hmm. I said, I don't like stumbling on words. Mm -hmm. You know, and you say, you know, like I said, I use the word trust God. And then I use the word, you know, obey God. You know, mm -hmm. when you use the word obey, that means mm -hmm. to be in complete compliance and, and conformity to the will, plan, and purpose of God. So it's just not, you know, obey God. We hear it in the church, but it has more weight than that. And the same way, like I said, with belief. Mm -hmm. You know, your belief system is composed of something. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to teach this thing by faith. It's composed of three things, knowledge, belief, and trust. Well, you know, I, I, you, you can give a surface definition or you can give a good definition. When I say surface definition, you just give, and I like to give both, not so, you know, so in-depth. That's what I'm saying. And so I spent time learning those words. And I said learning for my for my own self. And if these principles will work for me, they'll work for you. So, so we take the mystery out of it. It just don't work for the preacher. It'll work for you all too. Okay? All right. And so and I'm a living witness, you know. Um told you all I'm believing there 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 are some other areas I'm believing God for, which is not for sale. I don't I got God. And if God can do it for me, that means he can do it for you. You, you follow what I'm saying? Now, if I had all these things working for me, you, that'd be a question mark. Well, he got that because of. But see, you won't be able to say that about Pastor Hope. Because God removed me from the job. I got to believe him and trust him. Mm -hmm. And then I get a phone call after I leave the job, three years after I leave the job, from a man in Rochester, New York. And said, I've been praying for you. I met him at a conference. I've been praying for you and I couldn't get a hold to you. I just wanted to let you know. The Lord said, where are you going? You need to hear him. Mm -hmm. So continue to spend more time before. Okay. And then he said, I see someone giving you a plane. Praise a Lord. jet. Praise the Lord. Translated mm -hmm. jet. <sighs> My schedule won't allow me to do nothing but go to the house. Let me say this too. Wednesday, my schedule will allow me to go to Strut Yard. Because it won't be service Wednesday night. Let me let y'all know that. Unless y'all want to just meet over here. Okay? Um, Preacher London asked me to speak for him. They, they know what I'm talking about. Uh, Preacher London asked me to speak for him Wednesday night. He asked me to come. Wayside Church of God in Christ. So my schedule right now won't let me go one place, and that's two out, less than two hours away. I'm half away. Can you uh, can you ask me understand? Can you actually see my uh, my plane leaving Memphis, going up in the air? No sooner as it get up in the air, it lands. <laughs> <laughs> Just drive. <laughs> When my schedule demands me to be on the West Coast one night and then on the East Coast the next two nights later or whatever, I can't drive that far and be at 100%. You, you're not. It would demand me to have a... Budget. Now, if God is not pressuring you to do that, not even say pressure, but has not put that, don't, don't, don't try it. Just work in the area where, you know, where he got you. And don't make yourself look like you are not benefiting to the kingdom of God just because you ain't believed in no jet. Because if, if, if it wasn't God, I'd have gave it up a long time ago. 
Mm -hmm. Man, I'd lay this. I wouldn't. I ain't think about you. <laughs> when the dream or the vision is bigger than you, you can know it's God. Mm -hmm. I'm done. Could I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. Have you shared with them about the young man that used to be a member here? Oh, yeah. They, they already know. Okay. <laughs> Watch this. Y'all know who Angel is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. But see, they didn't hear it. Oh, who didn't hear it? They don't know about it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> but I want you to tell them what happened. Oh, no. Uh -uh. I can't tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell it's the dream or vision is from God. And I did some adding to this, and I'm not going to put that. If the dream or vision is from God or the revelation, it's bigger than you. Whatever God demands you to ask you to do, it's always bigger than you. It's always bigger. God is not asking you to do little things that's, I mean, you know, impossible things. Because he has said in Isaiah, is there anything hard for me? So the dream of vision that God gave is bigger. Number two. Corinthian was on TikTok. Again, I don't know about TikTok. <laughs> I'm thinking TikTok is a... I don't know. She was on TikTok. <laughs> I don't... Like I said, I don't know, you know. And, and so... Somebody called her and said her name, mentioned her name, and this guy heard it. I don't know how you hear it and all that, but he heard her name being mentioned. And he said, he said, whoa, I know that name. And it took him three or four days to, to just constantly roll it over in his head. You know, just like you, you go to a reunion or whatever and you see people, you go back to your hometown and you see people that you, you grew up with and then, because you ain't saw them in years, you see the face, but you can't put no name there. And it takes you going home and sitting down in, in, in the evening and then go to sleep. And then in the morning when you wake up, you say, oh, that, that, that doesn't suck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it happens to me. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying, it's like you can remember, yeah, yeah, I remember you, yeah, you, you just say, hey, does so, hey, does so. Like I was in, for, I, 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 I went to Forest City and then I went to Walmart. And I, I was giving it a check out and I heard this, this voice. I said, I hadn't heard that voice before. That was 20 something years. I said, I hadn't heard that voice before. And I turned around and it was three ladies. And, and one of the ladies, I, I said, you know, I said, is that Joe? Cause she was in front. She was in front of me. I said, is that J Joe? And she said, yeah, that's Joe. I say, is she still mean as a rattlesnake? She said, no, she really not mean. <laughs> <laughs> but the lady lives in, in, in Holly Grove, and I used to work with her before I moved here to Memphis. But I remember the voice. Okay. Anyway, and so he 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 got up and uh, went on Facebook because he remember he said that girl used to go to that church over there on Hollywood and Jackson. And so he, he went on Facebook and, uh, and looked up that name and blah, 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 and read across. So he was looking and, uh, and uh, he led him to Corinthian and he sent her an email. Y'all, y'all know the story. Yeah. He sent her an email and, okay, it says, uh, he, he said, Hi. now she sent me the email. I was up preaching and, I, and, and I, the message came and I, and I didn't look at it until Monday. I could feel my phone vibrating, but when I got home, I didn't, she, you know, I looked at the money, then I responded to her. And, and this is what he said. He said, hi, sweetie. I may be, I may be very mistaken, but was your daddy like a look, like a, uh, like a little kid or like a kid preacher? <laughs> <laughs> this is what he said. He didn't say about, but he said about 20 years ago. Actually, it's been longer than that. About 20 years ago, off of Jackson and Hollywood area. And uh, this is what she said. And because when I looked at it, I'm saying, now who is she? I'm looking at the boy's face. I'm looking at his face. And I said, I know Corinthian ain't got involved with that. Because <laughs> he got tattoos all over his neck and everything. 
Mm-hmm. First impression can be, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, don't you say the book buys. Okay. Don't Y'all already know the rest book. of it. <laughs> Buy a cup. Don't judge a book by a cup. Okay. You listen, you know. Sometimes it is. And so, anyway, and she said, yes, he was and still is. <laughs> she was abrupt with it. Yes, he was and still is. And so, uh, she sent it to me. And I, and I, I didn't know the gentleman. I say, I don't, you know. So I looked up his, you know, went on Facebook and looked him up. I couldn't find him. So I put Memphis in there after I put his name in there. And then, and then he came up. And there was a phone number. Still don't know who this is. And there was a phone number. And uh, so I called that number. Didn't get no response. And I called it again. And the text message came. We don't open up until 1 o'clock is what it says. So I, I texted him back and I said, this is, you know, I said, this is Pastor Hope, blah, 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 something. I, I may have not said that, but I said something to the degree. And, uh, and, uh, and he responded, who is this? <laughs> and we responded, who is this? And uh, I may have said, can I come by when you open up and blah, blah, blah. And he, said, he wanted to know who it was. And I, then I responded and said, this is Pastor Hope. You know, I was over there on Jackson Avenue, and the phone rang. As soon as I put that in there, he got it, he, the phone rang. He said, Pastor O, he said, you don't remember me, but this is Angel. He said, I was the young, young boy over there. He was actually a kid. I guess he thought I was a kid, too. You know, I was young back then when I first moved there. But I was in my 30s, mid-30s. And so, I'm trying to hear up. <laughs> 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 and so... He said, Pastor Hope, he said, where your church located? And I told him where we was located. He said, can I come by there? I want to see you. And so uh, his voice don't even sound familiar no more. But anyway, uh, so I said, yeah, I'll be over there in just a little. He said, well, I'm going to come on by. And that was like a Monday, Monday, I think Monday morning. And uh, so I came over here and he didn't show up at that time so I went to Kroger's and he called me when he got here and I came back. When I drove up on the parking lot, I remember every vehicle that was on this parking lot. The only vehicle that was not on this parking lot was a white car. So I got out and I moved toward the white car and the door opened up just like a Lamborghini door. Boom. You know, you know, however they open up. But the doors opened up like, like so, yeah. And uh, it was a cor- white Corvette. Brand new. And he got out, and man, he done grew. He's taller, about six two, and so on. And when when I when he got out and stood up, I could see the face now. I'm his angel. And and I didn't even rec- like I said, I didn't recognize him, I, the name or nothing, you know. And I couldn't remember his last name. And uh, this is what he said. He said, Pastor Hope. He said, I just wanted to come by here and thank you personally. See, I said, when you learn to live out the benefit of, outside the benefit of yourself, if God gives you a task to do, stay with the task. Don't get, get bored. Don't, don't let it do. Stay with it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it over and over and over and over. You want to lay it down. You want to stop. You want to, and there have been many opportunities for me to quit and just, just leave, go somewhere. Get away. But I show up every Sunday and every Wednesday. Because I know. And that's why I say you learn to live outside the benefit of yourself. You never know who you're going to. Who you who you touch it. And I could have been a monster when I was over there. Dil- disliking kids and everything else. And so this is what he said. He said, I want to come out here in person and thank you. He said, because you gave me my first job. You taught me work ethics. My daddy didn't teach me this. You taught me. <laughs> he told his daddy that. He said, I told my daddy that. You didn't teach me nothing. Pastor Hope taught me these work ethics. And these work ethics have moved me to where I am now. He said, I won't let you know. I'm a millionaire. Praise the Lord. Because of you. And I'm like, I'm sweating now. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. What are you saying, sister? Because you you had the infancy in your hand. And what you do with it? Did you treat the infancy bad? Did you let him go locking? I'm just saying just like the infancy, in the infancy stage of this, I could have treated him bad. 
Run him off. Didn't care nothing about him. I went and picked Clay up. I found out about Clay, this young boy that lived beside him. And, and when I got ready to go one Sunday, picking Clay, I went and picked Clay up one Sunday. The next Sunday I went by there, Clay was ready to go. And, and I saw Angel on the porch. And, and I say, who is that Clay? Clay was a little boy. He was a little bit older than Jacquez Jr. How I'm getting this. <laughs> and, and so I, I told Clay, I said, can he go too? Because you know I got to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning going picking up them kids. And I asked Clay, can he go too? And he went. I didn't know his condition in the house. He was hungry. And we fed him hot dogs. <laughs> and chips and stuff. And, and so, and boy, he he was eating. <laughs> boy, he was eating. <laughs> and then when we when we get out of church, a lot of times he go home with me and eat. And he said, "You taught me these work ethics because I used to go get him and mow my yard, and I used to mow the church yard, and used to mow Mr. Roy's yard. That was my job that I had when I first moved here from more Mr. Yard Roy's yard, making thirty dollars every two weeks because he didn't have no job. When nobody hired me." <laughs> I mean, I didn't have a job. And I used to take him with me. And then treat him bad. Now, fast forward that thing. you talking about 20 something years later. Now, now he's a millionaire. He got five businesses. Now, how many businesses do we have? There's nothing wrong with if you don't have a business. I'm saying he got five businesses two or three tattoo places, a restaurant, a barber shop, and a salon. Mm. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Mm. He's, he's telling me he's getting ready to open up another tattoo place in another city. Mm. He said he show up on the job in flip flops and walk around and folks thinking that that's a bum. He's a bum mm -hmm. and don't know he's the owner. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he told me. <laughs> he said, but I want to personally thank you for that. I didn't know that it was going to pan out like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I do know one millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> he be him. <laughs> no, Pastor Hope not, not say, don't have his hat out. Trying to get something. No, 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 no. If God laid on his heart, it didn't have to be God. That's right. It didn't have to be a God thing. It ain't going to be a pastor whole thing. Come on, now. Right. And I ain't getting in line and ask you something. Don't you know, we, we our light builders do. Can you help me? Can you? I'm not doing that. If God got me over here, he had to lay it on your heart or whatever. One of the things that I'm going to say this. One of the things that I, I, I dislike. I'm not saying it happened, but sometimes you do that. Sometimes you talk to people and say, do you need anything? A lot of times, and I say a lot of times, I don't know. I can't say a lot of times, but there are times God hadn't already been spoke to that person to do this mm -hmm. even before they ask you, do you need anything? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put it this way. People that obey, they don't ask, do you need anything? They just come and do it. Mm -hmm. you, you, you get, you, do y'all understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look, I was praying for this young lady one Sunday. Y'all know that's the time that I stood, you know, didn't sit down until 730 and I pray for this young lady, saying God's going to really bless you. You know, she, her home, she didn't have money. The family didn't have money. She didn't have good clothes and all that. And I pray God is really going to have you come in contact with her. And they're going to bless you with good clothes and blah, blah, blah. Because she's been going to school. They've been making fun of her. She, you know, failed. And uh, she wanted some nice clothes and whatnot. And I'm, I'm praying for her and so on. So when I got through praying for her, the Lord said, now you bless her. Huh? <laughs> No, I'm told everything that the Lord was going to do. And then the Lord said, now you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, the, I think the next couple of days, we, I, I didn't take her shopping. But I, I gave her the money to, I, actually I gave it to somebody in the church to take her. Because I wasn't going to trust her family to do it. Mm -hmm. And to buy her whatever she wanted. And how many she wanted. You know, how many, I mean, I don't care if it was a hundred outfits. There was no limit as to what she wanted. She came to church smiling. <laughs> Months later, you know, I'm just saying, wish you saw. And so, but anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm done. You can tell the dream vision is from God. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> if it's bigger than you, whatever God tell you to do is always bigger. Amen. It will require faith. Amen. And that's on your part, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, what we, what, the way I say that, it, it, uh, the will of God does not happen automatically. Mm -hmm. It will require faith, and that is on your part, okay.
Amen. Um, if it does not require faith, it's not God. Okay, all right. You can tell the dream vision is from God if you can't let it go. Boy, I'm telling you, I've been pressured just to let it go, just leave. Get away! I can't let it go. Okay. They said, yeah, you can. Let it. Yeah, I can. You think for one minute I won't go to sleep with this bothering me and you can't get no peace in the, in the middle of the night? And God constantly bothering you? Okay. David said it like this. I take the wings of evil and fly to the farthest part of the earth. When I get there, he already there. <laughs> There's no escape. Mm -hmm. When you know the will of God. Mm -hmm. That means you can't let it go. Mm -hmm. And I'm leery of people that God called to do something and then they find something else to do. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody pull them off the perch of what God called them to do. What the God called them. Number three, you can tell if the dream of vision is from God. <clears throat> Are you willing to die for it? That's all this. So I know it's God. If, if, if he ain't trying to make a cup pass, I can't make a cup pass. My hands are, when I say my hands are tied, he done took me off the job now. I can't go out and. and, 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 and if the income that I got coming in now, it, 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 no. But God can afford it. All right. And that's what my, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And so daily I get up and I do what he told me to do. He told me to affirm his word. Mm -hmm. And that's all I do. Affirm mm -hmm. his word. Just mm -hmm. like a tape recorder. I play it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what affirm mean. You just look it up and you'll see two words. A survey aid and then you see positive and earnestly. And you just look those words up and you'll see what they say. See what they mean. And one of them means to duplicate. Now I'm going to say this. You can never be put in a position of doubt when it comes to positive. Positive can never be a negative. <laughs> Your lifestyle will never be negative. You know, to... That don't tell me you I'm not saying you're not gonna have you gonna have your moments. You always have your moments, but get over it. Mm. Be a quick recovery. Mm. Positive will never be a negative. You got a battery in your vehicle and you got a negative and a positive. The negative is never trying to be a positive, and the positive is never trying to be a negative. Positive can never be be one 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 definition of positive can never be challenged with doubt. Anything that's positive can never be challenged with doubt. Mm -hmm. A negativity. Quitting. Stopping. Okay. That's another message. I already see them going on. <coughs> Father, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you today. For who you are and what you are in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for each individual. And the sound of voice. I ask that you bless them and continue to bless them. In such a special way in Jesus' mighty name. Every word that goes forth is unhindered, uninterrupted in Jesus' name. The seeds that will grow in our life and come forth. We thank you for every believer that's here. Father, we repent before you in Jesus' name today. Whatever area that we've missed you in, we repent. We ask you to forgive us and cleanse us in your blood in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. I thank you for restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, amen. amen. All right. We praise God for you. We appreciate God for everyone that's here today. Again, uh, at this, uh, is there anyone for prayer? We have set ourselves in agreement with you for God to do this and so. Keep thanking God for your house. Now, he, like I say, he go back to the beginning and start dealing with you all in, in certain areas. Like I said, he give you a regiment. You, you know what I told you, Sonny? Regiment. The regiment. God will give you a regiment. And the revelation will come. And the regiment is, is this. For two and a half years, my regiment was to make house payments. I ain't even saw the house yet. Well, I did see the house. I saw it two years later. Six months with me driving by, back and forth. I mean, driving by there two, three days. Six months of that was driving by there every three days, pointing at the house and I'm going to live there. 
But the two years, I didn't, didn't see, see the house. So my regimen was to make payments on a house that I never saw before, and I knew how much I, I needed to, to pay. And so every month, I would deposit that amount of money in the bank. That's the regimen. Revelation came when I drove by the house and I saw it. I said, man, I like that house. And I'd go by there and I'd see it visually. And I said, I don't live that. Me and Corinthians. Dude, we were the first one went by there, me and my daughter, because I picked up from school. She said, Daddy, where are you going? I said, uh, just ride with me. And nobody at home for six months. And finally I did find see a car in the yard and I pulled up and knocked on the door and the lady was on the phone, came to the door. And I said, ma'am, I said, I don't mean no harm. I said, but I like this house. I said, it's the owner of the house here. She said, yeah. So I, back, I turned around and told my wife, come on, the owner of the house is coming to the door. I turned around, she's still talking on the, you know, got the phone to her ear. I said, ma'am, I said, are you the owner? She said, yeah. I said, I don't mean no harm. I said, but I like this house. I said, if you ever, did, can I, if you ever decide to sell it, can I leave my name and number? She dropped the phone and started hollering. She was on the phone talking to a real estate agent at that moment. Crazy. Saying she wants the house for sale on on the market for sale after the holidays because it's New Year's New Year's Day and then New Year's Eve. And, you know, it's like on a Friday, and then you know, the weekends there ain't, ain't nothing gonna be. Just, and then Monday, you know, she get back started. And so never was for sale sign until you just show you how God worked it out. My real estate agent said I can't afford a house like that. Ain't no need me agreeing with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> Find another real estate agent. <laughs> Don't believe in God. Okay. <clears throat> I found another real estate agent. You know who the real estate agent was? The, the woman of the house. <laughs> the woman that owned the house. She set everything up for us. The day we bought the house, she took my wife to the bank and gave her three thousand dollars cash. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's tell you what, 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 what happened. Can't make this stuff happen. You can't figure it out. So regimen, whatever regimen God gives you. It may, it may be it may be God give you regimen to paint everybody's steps white in, in the neighborhood. You you ask them for you. <laughs> <laughs> it may be that God have you we need, I know that's your line of work, but we need everybody, you know, he, he'll get you to take care of your, somebody that's profit for you take care of. Mm -hmm. That was another reason. I took care of that duplex. And so, I, I'm ministering to you all. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I took care of the duplex. The, the owner of the duplex never had to come over there and do nothing. I treated it like it was mine. Whatever needs to be fixed, I fixed it. I never, never called him to say anything. And he, he came over there and he was just amazed. And he, when his mother died in the nice house around the block, he came personally and said, I want you to live in that house. Because <laughs> he knew I was going to take care of him. Mm -hmm. I told him, no, I'm, I'm all right. I should have anyway. I, I didn't. <laughs> nice house. On the corner. Corner lot. Looking good. Anyway, we, did, we stayed in duplex and so. And so when it came time for us to leave duplex, I was already ready. You know, in that mode. Ready. I ain't have to wait on nobody to prime me up. I'm already acclimated, is the word, to, to regiment. So I want you to keep that. And if God give you a regiment to save this amount of money, discipline yourself. To, to, do, to do this and do that, discipline yourself. Y'all might like going on trips and excursions and so on. I'm not saying don't, don't do it, but I'm saying regiment going to come. And then revelation takes place. But you discipline yourself and do what's required. And see what you walk into. It won't be no strain or struggle. But you maintain that confession. Thank God for our house.